What's up guys, Joe Munoz, One Step Prep Academy, your favorite FAA approved type rating center. You can find us at onestepprepacademy.com, onestepprep.com, and also onestepprep.net for all things personal development. Let's dive into some energy management, three to one descent planning. I really wanna share a few things with you here that have to do with calculating whether or not you're gonna meet a constraint, okay? Whether you're in any kind of airplane, 320, 737, you're using VNAV, managed descent, really doesn't matter. Let's say that you are descending to meet this constraint and we're going to start at an altitude of flight level 300 okay we're at 30,000 feet we need to descend across this constraint at 22,000 feet or flight level 220 we have a total of 8,000 feet to lose okay so I need to lose 8,000 feet now I'm probably not sharing anything here that you don't already know which is three to one math altitude to lose times three. So 8,000 feet to lose divided by 1,000 is eight, okay? Eight times three equals 24. I need 24 nautical miles to descend here to meet this altitude constraint. Now, let's look at something else, which is the rate of descent, because sometimes I see that we very much have 24 miles, maybe slightly less, 20 miles, and there's this massive panic and speed break extend and all this craziness because there's some doubt that we're gonna meet the constraint. Well, I'm gonna share something with you here that I would tie into your calculation. Once you, and by the way, use your automation, use VNAV, use managed descent, but always, and I cannot overemphasize this enough, always back up a mental three to one math model as you're descending on your arrival. It works good, lasts a long time, and especially when you tack on the second piece I'm about to share with you. So, I do the first part, which is calculate how many nautical miles I need to descend. The next thing I do is I figure out what rate of descent is needed. Now, the rate of descent that I need to meet this prior calculation is at least five times my ground speed. So if you look at the top left corner, generally is where you find ground speed of your navigation display, top left corner navigation display. Let's say you have a ground speed of 400 knots of ground speed, okay? So now what I need to do is figure out, hey, I need to take that number and multiply it by five, and that's gonna give me 2,000. Now, for those of you that don't like multiplication, you can get to the same number by simply dividing. 400 divided by two, 200, and then add a zero. So you could take that number, divide it by two, that would give you 200 and add a zero, that's 2,000, or you can simply multiply it by five. Either way, it's ultimately gonna get you the same result, but the point we're getting to is, look, I need 24 miles descending at 2,000 feet per minute. And if I have that distance with that rate of descent, I will meet this constraint, okay? Now, what I see and what spawned this video is sometimes I see that we are descending at a rate of a foot per minute rate of descent that's well in excess of five times ground speed. Sometimes we're over here at uh, say 2,800 feet a minute or even 3,000 feet a minute and we have 24 miles. So we have the 24 miles, we're coming down at 3,000 feet a minute. It's like, ah, we need to get down. Well, you're gonna meet it, right? How do I know that? Because as I just said, at a minimum I need 2,000. So if you're coming down and you say, hey, I need 2,000, but I'm descending at 27, 28, 3,200 feet per minute rate of descent, more than likely we got it. Now, let's tack on a little more complexity to this. Maybe you need to actually also descend and slow down. So you need to get down faster to have a level segment here, right? So we have a little bit of more of aggressive path to level early and then be able to slow. That's perfectly fine and getting down a little bit more aggressively to, to, to enable you to have that level segment for a deceleration is great. I will share with you that uh, to, to get down and see more accurately what your rate of, um, or better said, where you're gonna level off, use vertical speed. The level off stick in the 320 or that level segment really in any aircraft where it shows you where you're gonna level off is accurate when you're in vertical speed mode because you're forcing a rate of descent a constant rate of descent. The problem with thrust idle open descent or retard MCP speed is that the uh, rate of descent is variable while the thrust is constant. And because you have a varying rate of descent, it won't give you the full accuracy that you would expect to have when you are commanding a constant vertical speed using VS or vertical speed mode in your descent. So I do like to use 
a thrust idle open descent in a 320 or retard MCP speed in a 737, tomato, tomato, okay? And ultimately that gets me what's the approximate rate of descent to maintain my current speed of say 250 knots or 300 or whatever it happens to be up here, right? Or anywhere. Um, but then once I establish what's the needed rate of descent to maintain the speed, then I flip over to vertical speed and I just kind of manipulate it according to what I need in terms of where I need to level off. Now a rule of thumb in jets is that assuming you're in a level segment, all right, every one nautical mile traveled, so there's one mile, there's two nautical miles, there's three nautical miles. For every mile traveled, I can slow 10 knots. So that would be first I slowed 10, another mile I slowed 20, another mile I slowed 30, right? So for every mile I travel level flight, I can reduce speed by about 10 knots. This is true in level flight. If we're on a descending path, I'm effectively gonna need to double this, right? So rather than every one mile slowing 10 knots, every two miles I slow 10 knots, okay? All of this is very well, by the way, defined in detail in our energy management program available online. But I want to share this with you because sometimes I'm out, not only in the sim, but also flying, and I see this panic to get down. Sometimes warranted, but many times there's just not the realization that your current rate of descent exceeds what you would actually need to meet the constraint and therefore even though you look to be a little bit behind in terms of distance your rate of descent is aggressive enough to uh, have you recover and be able to meet the constraint so hopefully this makes sense if it doesn't obviously go back and push play learn the easy way as i always say and more than anything what i would love is to see you train with us here for your type rating or your atp ctp one step prep academy.com is a place to enroll for all things online video courseware, onestepprep.com, and for all things personal development, including fitness, finance, influence, communication, and all other things life skills related, onestepprep.net. Hope to see you there. Hope to see you in Miami, and I'll see you in the next video.